For this first replay, I actually wanted to use a Gen 5 Ubers game, but I couldn't find any uses of our featured Pokemon uh, in the tournaments that I skimmed, uh, which is not that surprising because Torrenty is not actually that good in Gen 5 Ubers, which is a shame because it's cool. It's, uh, you know, Gen 5, Max Power, Hurricane, and uh, it's being supported by Kyogre as opposed to Politoed. It's faster than uh, Arceus? Come on. But, uh, yeah, I understand. So, uh, you're looking at this replay and thinking, why is this ostensibly Gen 5 OU, but there's a Tornadus Therian in it? And uh, to that, the answer is, I had a uh, team tournament in my Discord server a few months ago, and I had the genius idea of making my own version of Gen 5 OU, which was basically minus everything that I find annoying. And uh, then I was like, well, since there's no rain, obviously, then I'll throw out, uh, I'll throw Tornadus T back in, just for the hell of it. Uh, I really didn't think it through beyond that, and everyone was complaining. It's like, did you think Torn T would be balanced? And I was like, I didn't think about it at all. <laughs> so, um, I initially uh, threw Manaphy in there too, but then everyone was like, well, well that's too much, and I was like, yeah, probably. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's why this replay has a Torn T in Gen 5 OU. And it's also why, to my recollection, the Slow King has Surf. Uh, because I banned Scald from that tournament as well in Gen 5 OU. Actually, I think I banned it from everything. I don't remember. Uh, everything where it applies. I heard yesterday that apparently they're bringing Scald back in Gen 9. Like, are you serious? Oh, man. Uh, I guess I know my next video will be about Scald. <laughs> so, my next video. More like a you know, documentary chronicling the pain suffered throughout the years by Scald victims. Anyway, uh, so Tornadus Therian is a fascinating Pokemon. I mean, Tornadus in general has fascinated us since its uh, first appearance in Generation 5. I remember very early on, like day 2 or 3 of Black and White or something, Shofu made this video where he hacked uh, Roost onto Tornadus, because there was no Tornadus Therian then, or Tornadus Incarnate, it was just Tornadus. Tornadus Incarnate was just Tornadus. Same with Landorus and Thunderous. So, because uh, this was the first ever pure flying type. And of course it didn't have Roost, which, that has to be like a, like a we don't want it to become a typeless Pokemon thing, right? There's no way that Tornadus should not be able to Roost. That's absolutely ridiculous. Same for the other two, honestly. I don't know what's going on there. But especially Tornadus. Yeah, and he hacked uh, Roost onto Tornadus, and he uh, discovered that if it Roosts, then it becomes typeless in the game's code. So, that was fun. But yeah, then Black and White 2 came around and introduced uh, the Therian form, and that is the focus of today's video. Because before, uh, Tornadus uh, Incarnate, or just Torn, was a fixture on Gen 5 OU Rain teams. I mean, maybe not a fixture, but it was very popular. Even though it was a UU Pokemon by usage. But you wouldn't like be surprised to see one in OU. It was like a legitimate threat. And it, you know, it's got that great 353 speed, uh, the same as Thunderous Incarnate, which is pretty crazy, outrunning uh, the Lottie Twins like that. And it was, uh, you know, it had a strong Specs Hurricane. And then Tornadus Therian came into the mix, and its special attack is actually lower than Tornadus Incarnates. And people are wondering, hey, you know, what's up with that? I want my strong specs Hurricanes. Why is or Life Warp Hurricanes? Whatever. Uh, what is it? You know, what gives? And then you see that Tornadus Therian is a lot, lot faster. And in fact, so fast, you know, that it outspeeds uh, Arceus, we know that. But in terms of OU, that's relevant because it outruns Scarf Tyranitar. And in Gen 5 OU, before the invasion of, you know, Alakazam and, and Reuniclus and just, you know, the magic guarding it up together, which pretty much necessitated Chopple as the item on Titar because uh, Scarf can outrun Alakazam. Uh, before that, then. Uh, it was pretty much Scarf Titar all the time if you weren't rocking with it. And if you weren't rocking, you probably didn't want to back then because it was generally a you know passive, weak waste of a Titar. But you didn't need to run Chopple. 
You can run lefties or, you know, Shed Shell because Doug Trio is around, stuff like that. But generally, like, the most consistent teams with Tyranitar ran Scarf. It was incredibly popular. It was a metagame standard. And then Tornadus... And one of the big threats that it dealt with was Tornadus. And then Tornadus Therian comes around and is like, yeah, never mind. You know, uh, Alakazam had already broken that rule of, like, no good attacker can be faster than Scarf Tar. Like, a, a lot of great players have gone through this phase where they discover that Scarf Tar doesn't just, you know, pursue a couple Pokemon. It kind of answers everything because it's so naturally strong. And then when you slap that speed on it, it's going to outrun pretty much every attacker ever. You know, like, Terrakion is no slouch in the speed department, but it gets outsped easily by Scarf Titar, stuff like that. You know, you can even do dumb stuff like, oh, that Keldeo is hanging around 40%. Well, my Titar Scarf Superpower will now take it out. Uh, so it just kind of answered everything like that. And Alakazam had not yet completely shaken up the metagame, but Tornadus Therian, uh, since it was uh, slappable onto the metagame's most, you know, uh, dangerous playstyle, Rain, which, you know, was kind of, you know, very weak at the end of Black and White 1, but then, you know, Black and White 2 came around, and also gave it Keldeo and Genesect, and of course Torrent Therian, so it was the uh, primary playstyle. And. Yeah, it, it, when you can't deal with it uh, through the Scarf T-Tar like most sand usually would, then that completely upheaves the metagame. And uh, you, know, you had people using like Spadef Skarmory to try and take it on. Not a bad check for sure, but also not exactly the most reliable thing. Uh, so yeah, Torntherian and... Gen 5 OU was a nightmare, you know, with Rain and, I mean, you turning into Dugtrio, so forget about dealing with it with Spadef Jirachi. You know, Rotom Wash would get worn down. Uh, you know, people were using Zapdos, which, you know, was a very good Pokemon in that metagame because it destroyed Rain so uh, easily. You know, it, it was very difficult to force it out with Spadef. You know, if Specs Hydro isn't an Oko button on it, then you're just risking losing a lot to it. Um, and with Roost, it was a lot easier. I mean, it had the rocks weakness, of course, but if it had, uh, since it had Roost, it could offset its Stealth Rock weakness. But, I mean, speaking of Stealth Rock weakness, that was another big thing about Torrent Therian, because obviously it wasn't just fast and breaking that Scarf Tar attacking rule, uh, and it was obviously still very strong, even though it wasn't quite Torn uh, Incarnate levels of special attack power. Uh, it also had Regenerator, so here you have a Stealth Rock weak Pokemon that gains health for switching into Stealth Rock. Now, granted, if rocks are up, it's never going to be higher than 75%, but I mean, that's... Talk about... Running a Stealth Rock weak Life Orb Pokemon was never, you know, easier. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's... Uh, I, they couldn't have... Uh, I mean, I guess if they gave it Magic Art, that would have been pretty bad too, but you, you know what I'm getting at. Uh, you know, choice specs locks uh, are also much less punishable if you want to, uh, you know, because you lock into a move and you get forced out. It's like, oh, well, you know, on a Pokemon like Dragonite, something like that is really punishing because now it's on a timer and Tornado's there and it's like, yeah, I'll do this forever. It's like, look, if the trade-off to, you know, never getting KO'd by Stealth Rock, pretty much, uh, is you can never be higher than 75%, I mean, that's fine. It's not like it was a hit taker, you know, even at 100%. You know, especially in rain when, you know, even like weak uh, scalds are getting powered up to hydro pump level. You know, you don't want your torn Darien taking hits. Uh, you want it coming in off the million U-turns and volt switches that are in the metagame. Especially because it existed at the same time as Genesect. But even after Genesect was banned, then Tornadus Therian didn't have a problem getting into the game. And I mean, worst case, you just double switch with it. And it's not hard for it to find opportunities because it's strong, it has such powerful spammable stab, and it's faster than, like, everything. I mean, being faster than Alakazam, even, is, is insane. Because uh, Alakazam, ever since Tornadus Therian left, Alakazam has been the fastest unboosted Pokemon you'll see in any Gen 5 OU game. Yeah, okay, sometimes people mess around with stupid stuff like Jolteon, but, like, the fastest good Pokemon it is the benchmark. You know, and before that, it was Torrent Therian. I'm just running circles around everything offensively. You know, U-Turn, Hurricane, Focus Blaster, Super Power, then the last can be like Taunt. Uh, some people threw on Heat Wave, specifically for Spadef Skarmory on Sand Teams, which was quite reliable. You know, there was a time where Hippowdon uh, was <laughs> arguably the better Sand Setter in Gen 5 OU. Um, because it also, like, if you had Spadef Hippo, it didn't auto-die 
or risk auto dying switching into torn uh, Therian in order to reset the weather and uh, as a result then you uh, have a lot more flexibility in playing around it as opposed to T-Tar which you know takes uh, can't heal is, is big yeah if you're Chopel you can technically reset the weather once even if you switch into a superpower focus blast but at the same time you really don't want to be doing that of course, uh, then, you know, some uh, uh, Torns also started tossing out, like, Grass Knot and stuff, because it's a more accurate uh, way to hit um, T-Tar. And it also slammed Gastrodon, which was popular to uh, try and stave off the Rain Assault. And, of course, Hippo, so it wasn't 100%. That's the thing about uh, Torrent Darien. With regular Torrent, with Incarnate Tornadus, you can handle pretty much whatever it does. I mean, it's incredibly dangerous, obviously, but... It's not that fast, and it doesn't live forever. And with uh, Torn Therian, then these issues are, you know, it, it is that fast, and it does live forever. So you have to deal with it actively and repeatedly. You know, it's, it's very difficult to wall. I mean, you can't even just say, alright, I'm just going to throw on the bulkiest Pokemon ever, Chansey, because, you know, it's going to get you turned on with Rocks Up, or Blissey, whatever. Well, Blissey's more vulnerable to Superpower. Um, but it's you turn on with rocks up. I mean, it also has taunt, so like forget healing, and it's wearing you down while you're not wearing it down. I mean, you really can't overestimate the importance of uh, longevity, even on offensive Pokemon. Because if Torntharian had you know a reasonable ability, then it would not be nearly as big a deal. Because you know it's gonna get KO'd or it'll be taken advantage of before. It can uh, really bowl you over. I mean, if you're playing well, obviously. It, it would be a reasonable thing to defend against. But the whole reason why it was axed was because it was quite unreasonable to defend against. It was uh, you know, dealing with such a threatening Pokemon over such a prolonged period. That's the whole idea of Pokemon like that. That they're balanced, their power is balanced out by the fact that they don't stick around forever. I like... Uh, I don't know, if you took, like, Kieran Black or Haxorus or something. I mean, they have other weaknesses besides the fact that they don't stick around forever. And Kieran Black even has Roost. But um, they are not that fast, and uh, they have weaknesses and all that other stuff. But if they had Regenerator, then they would be... I mean, I also want to make a video on how insane Regenerator is. But if they're... Uh, I mean, just look at another uh, Pokemon in this game, Mianxiao. Very underrated one. Slo I, or, I don't know how I still focus on Mianxiao before I focus on Slowking. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Regenerator will have its own video. I just love Mianxiao. But, yeah, I mean... Uh, when you have to... If you had to deal with Kieran Black over and over and over and over, then, yeah, no team is going to be able to stand up to that. And uh, that's the Torrentarian thing. So... Yeah, that's... Uh, and then, you know, of course, there, there are always Pokemon in the current gen. You can call it, you know, current gen syndrome or new toy syndrome or whatever. That people go, oh, you know, that's not so broken. Come on, you can deal with it. You know, um, I think some people, if Arceus was dropped into OU, would be like, oh, it's not literally destroying everything from turn one. It's not an Uber, you know. But, uh, you know, people look back at it. It's like, how is this ever allowed for more than, like, a week? You know, uh, there's so many examples. Like, Gen 4 Garchomp is a pretty good example. Um, I mean, and that that was, you know, not counting Sandvale. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, then there was also... Uh, Gen 5 had a bunch of stuff like that, obviously. Genesect being one. You know, Gen 6 had, like, Aegislash, things like that. But, um, man, I... Uh, Tornadus Therian... I mean, it didn't last forever... But it, de it was definitely over half a year, and you, know, you had a bunch of people suggesting, I don't know, there, there's always, uh, I'll stop myself before I get into another Gen 5 tiering democracy nonsense, yeah, before I go into that territory <laughs> again, but I, I mean, it wasn't even just like uh, inexperienced people though, it was always... There's always some people who, like, really hate the idea of banning a Pokemon. I'm convinced at this point they just like spamming broken stuff. <laughs> it's definitely not the most honest argument. And I think echoes of this sentiment are going to pop up in that Scald video. Because it's like intelligent people, good players, who know what they're talking about, and yet they, you know, give all these nonsense arguments like, 
I mean, with Torn Theory, and it was crazy. It was always like, oh, you know, um, just just get creative. That's all you have to do. And which is obviously the greatest argument ever because you could just get creative to deal with Mega Ray Quaza. That's actually a thing people did. They uh, had to get creative to beat. Um, they beat it with like a Violet Porygon two or something. Um. Yeah, that was that. Um. Yeah, so the replay ended, I can move on. But yeah, then uh, people were suggesting, Oh, Rotom Heat, that counters Genesect and Torn Therian, and isn't weak to Dugtrio. Yeah, it's also terrible, but... Yeah, so Torn Therian terrorized Gen 5 OU as an offensive force. It's very important to remember. And it proceeded to not have quite as much of an impact on Gen 5 Ubers after. But I always keep an eye out for when it pops up, because I just love the idea of Kyogre setting up rain for Torn Therian and then it hurricaning everything else. Not a lot of flying resists in... Uh, in Gen 5 Ubers to my memory. I mean, there are, obviously, but it's not like um, something on every team. At least I don't think so, because a lot of Arceus, most Arceus forms don't resist it. I mean, obviously, you don't want to run into Arceus Rock Sand, but um, yeah, I mean, I think the problem is that it's just not that strong by Gen 5 Ubers. I think it could get something done, though. You know, you got your Kyogre, Ferrothor, and Tanacruel Arceus um, set of four, and then you have your. Um, your Lottie or your Lottie or Palkia, probably Lottie for the speed. And then, hey, and uh, Arceus Ghost, obviously. And then, hey, there you go. Also, that team doesn't have a flying resist. Anyway, so Gen 6 OU uh, sees Torn go in a completely different direction because there's no more permanent rain, so that's out the window. And Hurricane gets nerfed from 120 base power to 110. Um, that's for those who didn't know that that in Gen 5, Hurricane was 120. That's what I meant uh, when I said earlier in the video that it's it was at max power in Gen 5. Uh, that's, you know, that's a huge difference. So now people are like, oh, it's not going to threaten anything, and Hurricane is unreliable stab, you know, you don't really see uh, fighting types running around spamming Focus Blast as their primary stab. Not to say Keldeo doesn't run Fire, uh, fire Blast. Focus Blast sometimes, but it's not like it's go-to spam move. Yeah, so the first guy I saw spamming Assault Vest in Gen 6 OU in early XY was Heist, or Babidi 1998. And that pretty much became its go-to, because in XY, the array of threats is so diverse and so strong that traditionally hard countering them is going to be difficult. And this is not, you know, unique to Gen 6. Uh, this is, was very similar in Gen 5 and Gen 4, and honestly, any nascent metagame, which is still developing and, you know, you're getting used to all the power creep and, you know, the metagame isn't fully established and so on. So, you kind of have to play around Pokemon, not by truly hard countering them, but by just having methods to dance around them. And Assault Vest Torn Therian is an amazing example of this. Uh, and when I make my Assault Fest video, eventually it'll be a prime uh, contributor to that as well. But it was a big deal because suddenly it's like a Tornadus Therian with Assault Fest is obviously not a counter to something like um, Spex Keldeo. But uh, so you're not trying to counter it forever. You know, you're trying to hold it off just long enough to where you can, you know, play the game with the rest of your team. And that's why AV Torn T is so good, uh, or like a you know Spex Latios Draco Meteor. You know it's very it's very bulky when you invest in it and give it an assault vest, and it's obviously got an amazing uh, utility move pool. U turn, you know a buff knockoff. Uh, so I mean most of the time when AV Torn T does its thing, it's just U turning and knocking things off, and that's all it needs to do. I mean in more modern days, a lot of AV Torn Ts don't even use Hurricane. I mean they. Uh, or a uh, flying stab at all. I mean, that's kind of died out. But I think people generally prefer air slash as the stab on um, AV Torn now. But yeah, I, that's uh, it's crazy because it went from this, you know, offensive behemoth to this, like, pure utility poke. And, but, but it's really good because it's a, f another reason why it's so good at playing around things is because it's a defensive Pokemon and it's fast. And speed is an underappreciated aspect of being good defensively. I mean, uh, my go-to example is always Gen 2 Raikou, which would not be nearly as good a special wall if it didn't also outrun every special attacker. You know, not that it can't take them on even when it gets paralyzed, which is often, but 
part of the reason why it's so good at, you know, dealing with things is because it outspeeds them. It threatens them. It limits, you know, that means it can heal in their faces. It means it can finish them off before they can attack it. Things like that. That's why so many uh, game plans in GSCOU revolve around paralyzing Raikou. Not even taking it out of the picture, just slowing it down so that Vaporeon can barrel it over after a growth or something. And in Gen uh, 6, then Torntharian has that same speed concept of it just outruns, you know, that's why it's so able to pivot. And if it was slower than Keldeo and Latios, it would not be able to pivot into them. But, you know, it's like, all right, I want to see what move Keldeo is going to lock itself into. I can scare it out with my Stab Hurricane. And, you know, I can U-turn out. And even if the hit is big, like from Latios or whatever, then you can just um, U-turn out and you regenerate it off. That's when it's so great. I mean, it's so good with Regenerator that you have this defensive Pokemon. Okay, you know, when I say defensive, I don't mean like a pure wall, so that's important to keep in mind. But a defensive Pokemon, a utility Pokemon, whatever you want to call it, that is very often never above 75%, and it's still so good at doing this just because of how much it heals and how much it does in return. Because if there's one thing you can take away from Pokemon, you know, some people, uh, when they're starting out, they face a stall team, they get frustrated. It's like, oh, it's just switching between counters. You know, it's like, yeah, but those counters are not, I mean, if your team is good and your playing is good, those counters are not going to beat you by themselves. The reason why those counters are good is because they also threaten you in return. Toxapex doesn't just take hits. Hey, there's Regenerator again. It also harasses you with Scald and Toxic and Toxic Spikes and Knock Off and yeah, It's a nightmare. And that's what Torntharian does. It doesn't just switch in and take the hits. It also helps pivot out. It you know gets some momentum for you with U-turn. Knocks off items, which is the most irritating thing ever. I mean, even if you can deal with it, then you're going to have to do it without lefties most of the time. Like a lot of teams in uh, Gen 6, without something like... Uh, with without Poison Heal Gliscor, then they are going to lose an item to Torn T. Or, feasibly, some sort of Mega, I guess, but I mean, that's that's unlikely. And those are all, you know, it can threaten everything anyway. Like, it commonly runs HP Ice in um, Gen 6, specifically so Gliscor can't avoid its, uh, can't absorb its knockoff, and the, so Clefable has to deal with it, and Clefable gets knocked off, and then once Clefable gets knocked off, it's not very comfortable at switching into Torn T's Hurricanes either. It's very, it gets soft willed forced. It's very exploitable for Torn's teammates. Like it can U turn into Mega Metagross or Excadrill a lot more easily. All sorts of stuff. So basically, Torn T makes things happen even in this more defensive, bulky guise. So uh, it's a wonderful Pokemon in that regard, and I should, probably shouldn't have had this replay on slow. Um, but yeah, look, it's pivoting into Gliscor here. Is this the Taunt Knock? I mean, look, it's take... Oh, there it loses the Assault Vest. But look, it's just going to pivot out. There's no Rocky Helmet on the other team. Completely riskless. And just going to stick around and come back again later. I don't even remember what happens. But uh, yeah, longevity is important. Oh, look, there it came in again. You know, it's taking the weaker knockoffs now. This is just one example. I mean, it's been doing this for years. Uh, it's so good. Torrenty is so good. That I, here's a couple examples. Number one, one of the Pokemon it handles is Superior. Uh, Superior regularly runs Glare primarily to mess with Torn T, which would otherwise be the best counter ever. Even when paralyzed, Torn T is great. In, in fact, it sometimes even likes it. It gives us slow U turns. Uh, another example, same thing, uh, or same idea. Uh, it doesn't mind switching into Call Mind Clefable with T Wave at all because it's going to knock it off and, if Clef and it takes the boosted Moonblast, fine. And if Clefable T Waves it, Torn T uh, gets to slow U turn into its teammates. Oh, look, there's a spin and now it's going to heal everything in this game specifically. Good lord. <laughs> yeah, if you can uh, get, keep rocks off for a solve as Torn T, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mind burns. I mean, it'll stay in to knock off a Rotom Wash if the trade-off is getting burned, or, you know, in more modern times, even paralyzed. As T-Wave, Rotom Wash becomes more popular to deal with Clef. But it's, uh, you know, it doesn't mind at all. It's just, it, it likes to, it doesn't mind playing dirty, like, in a sense. Not in the sense that it's underhanded or cheating or something, but in that it doesn't need to be in pristine condition to do its job. And that kind of flexibility is really important to adapting to the many different situations you're going to find in a battle because if you've got a cat Pokemon that works perfectly but only if all the conditions are set for it and everything is pristine and you know wonderful and perfect then it's not going to be consistent because as the fabric of defensive cores begins to unravel over the course of a game when damage starts spreading 
then your Pokemon is not going to be in pristine shape anymore. And that's, you know, why Torn T, you know, rocks are up, uh, it's burned, and it's still, you know, slicing and dicing. It's crazy. Uh, oh, look at that. Just uh, now the Torn T is back to full health with, with this free U-turn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, pursuit trapping, uh, it, it doesn't even necessarily have to worry about that, because, you know, T-Tar gets slammed with superpower, and Weavile doesn't like switching in, so, I mean, not to say that it can't be pursuit trapped, of course, but it's not very easy. Uh, and it can still live, depending, so, uh, it can really adapt itself to do whatever it wants. Um, yeah, oh, and, uh, here's another ridiculous example. At the beginning of the game, when, you know, before this rocks or anything, it's so difficult for so many teams to threaten Torn. I remember uh, Thunderous used to be really popular and you could just lead off with Torn Therian and no matter what the opponent led off with you'd be fine because they were never going to KO you pretty much and they were all and you could just heal off whatever damage they did to you. So a prime example and I, here's why I mentioned Thunderous. Uh, you have a Torn Therian lead against a Thunderous lead right? And you can just stay in and use knockoff if it has a magnet or a life orb or choice specs or anything that would boost torn or sorry thunderous's power enough to actually ko you then you knock it off if it hits you before that knockoff that means it's scarfed so it's not going to ko you anyway uh so then you just stay in and remove its scarf and then no matter what you you turn out after so it's, I mean, obviously it's more nuanced than that. It depends what you're going to switch in after and so on. But basically the idea that Torn Therian, or, you know, Magnezone is another example. The idea that Tor Assault as Torn Therian can so risklessly, you know, on turn one, stay in against Magnezone and Thunderous and these incredibly strong uh, electric Pokemon with their, you know, stab electric super effective hits and, you know, be pretty much scot-free for it is absolutely insane. And that is uh, the the immense power of uh, Torn Therian uh, with an Assault Fest. It is kind of frank. How did Metagross go 81 turns without Mega Evolving? Goodness gracious. Yeah, so here, look, Torn, even if it gets burned here, I don't, oh, it doesn't have the Assault Fest anymore, never mind. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Slowbro could have come in here, but it doesn't really matter. It's already, look how long it's uh, been doing this. But I think uh, Nintendo's got this one locked anyway. Well, not necessarily. If he gets a, if he avoids a burn, it could definitely be done with the mash boost. If he has Ice Punch for Gliscor, I actually don't remember how this ends. It's been a while. There's the boost. Is he gonna get the burn? No, but I, no, I think he's out of range. So you guys gotta go for the flinch. Doesn't get it. Mmm, tight ending. But yeah, Torn Therian, amazing. So then uh, we moved to Gen 7, and actually I gotta take one of my bathroom breaks, so I will BRB. Yeah, so uh, 
in the at the beginning of Gen Seven, then Torn Therian was pretty much nowhere to be seen because there was no uh, Keldeo to you know help check. You know, it's it's special attacking or especially defending, you know, slice and dice kind of tactics weren't really appreciated in the new metagame, because, I mean, there's no Keldeo, it's not really going to do anything against things like Tapu Lele or Coco or Magirna, and it just, you know, didn't really offer much. Uh, but then Gen... Uh, Gen 7. Uh, Ultra Sun and Moon came around and gave it Defog, and that was where it really became interesting. Well, it gave a lot of things Defog, but uh, another thing that happened was that Kartana became... Well, Kartana was kind of slept on at first, and then people realized it's actually quite good in, uh, at some point in uh, Sun and Moon. And then Ultra Sun and Moon, it gets knockoff and becomes really good. So now Torn Therian comes into the fray as one of these Pokemon that's good against Kartana and faster than it, which is very rare. Uh, it's only, you know, the only other uh, real faster Kartana check because it's so fast. Is are the Megalodes, preferably Megalodios, but Gladios can get it done too. Uh, so it's and obviously that takes up the Mega Slot, you know, not as slappable. So um, yeah, Torn Thering is a Kartana check and a Tapu Bulu check, of course, uh, that can defog now and do its U. I mean, but if it's going to defog, it obviously can't hold uh, an Assault Vest because only attacking moves with that. But yeah, I mean, U turn knock off Hurricane defog. That's that's great, sure. And uh, so people started slapping it on, and uh, I think uh, Trosco, the guy using it in this replay, he deserves a lot of credit because I think he was the first person to use Rocky Helmet on it. Because um, before, I think the default item, you know, before it really, it, it didn't really leap off as soon as Ultra Sun on a Moon came around, you know, because that early period was. Um, you know, filled with crazy stuff like Naga Nadal and, um, well, not so much Blacephalon and Staka Taka. They were kind of disappointing. But, um, yeah, it was a strange early period with all the adaptations and, you know, oh my god, Lando and Rotom get defogged now and Coco too. Uh, so, yeah, he was the one who really, he put Rocky Helmet on it and, you know, really popularized that idea. I think before that, the general idea for this new form of Tornadus uh, would be that its primary item would be uh, Fly in MZ. That's obviously another huge difference for uh, Torn because now it can also, well, we'll get to that more in a second, but obviously if you want to use Fly Z on it, then that's also restricting in the same way, you know, a Megalotti would be restricting because you can't, uh, that you know, restricts the Z crystals you can put on your other Pokemon. So, and I mean, yeah, you can like throw lefties or whatever on it, but Rocky Helmet has become like the go-to Torn Therian item. I also want to make a Rocky Helmet video because it's just such an amazing item. But it became uh, the uh, de facto Torn Therian item, I think, really thanks to Trosco. Because now you're not just switching into Kartana but, and uh, Bulu, but you're also punishing them for attacking. And I mean, even if you get knocked off, then hey, you do something back with that Rocky Helmet. Obviously, as you just saw on the screen there, it also makes it an amazing U-Turn Punisher. Uh, which is big, considering how much U-Turn uh, gets spammed, of course. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, and you know, Scarf Lando is absolutely everywhere. So, uh, yeah, Torn T was... Uh, it came into this new role of more of a, I don't want to say a physically defensive Pokemon, but it, let's, let's just say it started running defense EVs. <laughs> it was still fast, obviously. But, you know, you started running U-Turn, Knockoff, uh, Hurricane, Defog, and it was really reliable. And then people realized, hey, half the time, this thing is still slicing and dicing, much like the Assault Fest set did. And if I'm using Defog, that's more a reactive move. And I want to be more proactive with my uh, Torrent Therian. Not to say that Defog is bad, obviously, but it depends on the team. Especially because there's so many other Defog options now. You know, it's not like, uh, oh, well, Torrent Therian is the only Pokemon I can feasibly chuck Defog on. You know, like on Trosco's team, it could also be on Lando or Kartana. And obviously there's a million other options like Feeny and... Uh, Rotom and Coco, so you get the idea. Uh, you don't necessarily have to deal fog with Torn, and if you put Taunt on it, then suddenly you have a very naturally 
you know, a very natural stall breaker, uh, or you know, defense breaker, whatever you want to call it, because suddenly you know uh, you're blocking defog, you're blocking healing moves, you're blocking you know the setup of uh, entry hazards or leech seed, or you know uh, you're preventing Magirna or something from setting up. So you can uh, you have a very easy to run set uh, there. And you're still doing your, your regular torn things because its primary function is still switch in, you know, pivot into an attack, knock something off, you turn out, you know, hurricane when needed. But instead of a defog, you have the more aggressive option of taunt. I mean, knock off, taunt, U turn. Those three moves alone put in so much work. And on such a fast Pokemon with a regenerator, I almost called it degenerator, which is a you know derogatory nickname. Some people uh, have given that ability. Um. Yeah, so then uh, the more offensive side of that, of course, is that you don't necessarily need Rocky Helmet for it. If you don't have a Z move you want to use elsewhere, you can just uh, take off the... I mean, you got to be careful about taking the bulk off of it and dealing with Kartana, because Kartana is a huge threat. But the upside is now you can invest in um, boosted... Or not boosted, but atta special attack invested Hurricanes, which hit quite hard. And are boosted. Not only is it boosted further by Supersonic Sky Strike, um, but it also can't miss. So you have that one time fix to the hurricane accuracy problem. And uh, oh, uh, Torn Daring also very good naturally against rain teams, which uh, became popular around the same time uh, in 2018. And you know, you just talk about free hurricanes. I mean, but rain teams themselves love Tornado Therian, not just because of the free hur uh, hurricanes, but because, again, answering Kartana, kind of a big deal when you're running things like Fair Thorn and Mega Swamper. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, the uh, Rocky Helmet. Oh, yeah, there were other things, uh, too, like. Obviously, a uh, uh, set without fighting coverage is scared by T-Tar, but you don't necessarily have to uh, not running fighting set. Like that a defog, um, that slot without defog, where defog or taunt go, I mean, that can very easily be a fighting move on Rocky Helmet or, more commonly, um, a Z set. I mean, sometimes the Z set uh, doesn't even have to be flying Z. I, fighting Z was quite popular for a while. You know, all-out pummeling is a... Very uh, feasible, a uh, good move on Torntarian. It's not just for Titar either. That much better smack against something like uh, Heatran. Uh, I mean, some people like that end. Like, um, I, I can't imagine dropping knockoff. It's too good. But I mean, look, look at this. Uh, switching into you know terrain. Oh, it was uh, intimidated. I was like, why did it do so little? But yeah, uh, Torntarian doing exactly uh, what it does as always. Even with rocks up, it's it's insane. I would have been able to take that hit even without the, uh... Well, I don't know if this card is Scarf or not, because I'm not really paying attention. But, yeah. Uh, oh, the Leaf Blade missed on that turn, and... Oh, how did I skip all the way back here? No, we want turn 40, so, yeah. It dodges the Magma, and then... Yeah. Cool. Okay, so, that's the end of that. And, yeah. So, uh, just a quick illustration of how instant... Because, you know, the one-time boost in a fast-paced metagame, then being able to threaten that one-time boost to your special attack is a, you know, a big deal. And, um... Especially because you don't have to use it. Just the threat of it is going to be huge. And, I mean, look here, for example, uh, where Brofus switches the Torrenty into the Amoongus... And Amoongus can take a non, an unboosted Hurricane at full health, but it has to watch out for the um, for the boosted uh, or for the Sky uh, Sky Strike. So, and that messes up his options a lot, especially because Heat Wave is also quite a common move on Torrent Therian, so he can't just freely absorb it with Magnezone. I mean, forget you know fearing Fight Z or whatever. Uh, just uh, Blanket Heat Wave is also popular because dealing with Mega Scizor is a really big deal. Uh, dealing with Ferrothorn, obviously, especially on a Defog set. So again, all the flexibility in the world. And uh, Greninja tries to pivot into like Heat Wave or something, I think. Because, but 
yeah, just sky striking like that. It was being very aggressive with it, because, I mean, Magnazone is an unlikely risky switch. Because Especially because if anything happens to Magnazone, then, you know, Celesteela just goes bonkers. So that was a really good use of it, you know, um... And now it's just gonna be doing the same things it's always, uh, it always does. I forget what else it does in this game, but... Oh, look at... Oh my god, what a move. He, uh, Leech Seeded and got the Greninja... I know this isn't technically about Torntharian, but he Leech Seeded, got Greninja in on rocks, and healed it with the Leech Seed to be out of rocks range. That's such a beautiful turn. God. Uh... <laughs> anyway. Um... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Is it gonna pivot into Psychic? No way. Oh my god, it did! Awesome. <laughs> oh, and it U-turned out. Oh, this is too beautiful. Oh, that cleft did nothing. Oh wait, oh wait, wait, oh, there, there's more torn action, that's what I was looking for. Look, it's, uh, even just like the Hurricane without the boost, because again, Magnazone, you know, not wanting to switch in. Especially because, even if Magnazone does switch in, it just gets you turned on. Okay, you won't love that you blew the Z, but, I mean, uh, the Z in this, uh, battle is just for early game pressure. You know, because once the game starts breaking down, you know, with spikes and chip damage, then you are less in need of that immediate burst uh, of power. But early on, you know, to put your opponent on the back foot and get yourself into a good position early on, yeah, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you really welcome Magnus on switching in. It's like, oh, well, I can threaten you as well. You know, so it's not even necessarily uh, going to do much. So he just launches the hurricane and Mammoth Swine just drops. Wow. Yeah. And now... Oh, he must not have... Does he not have... Yeah, I guess he doesn't have U-Turn. I mean, dropping U-Turn or knockoff is just so alien to me. I can't imagine it, but... I, I get it. Because um, it, Torrent has so many good moves. I think people used to run a Toxic Torrent Therian sometimes to ruin Zapdos, one of the few you know good checks to it. Um, obviously, you have to watch out for Static Zapdos, which punishes your U-Turn knockoff stuff, but... Um, yeah. Uh, yes, more stuff happening, and, oh, Torn comes in again. I don't, I, what, oh, uh, just got Regenerator there, I think. Oh, missed Hurricane. Yeah, that's the other side of the coin we haven't really seen until now. Oh, yeah. That, and then the Hurricane Confusion. Of course, that part uh, factored in. Oh, I did eat the Sludge Bomb poison earlier. Yeah, okay. So, that's pretty much it. Um, I really don't... I didn't keep up with Gen 8 much after the like initial stages of the Crown Tundra. But, I mean, Boots Torn Therian is... Obviously insane. And Nasty Plot, too, so... I imagine Torn T is pretty good in Gen 8. That's... yeah. Uh, so, the last thing I wanted to mention is to go back to Gen 6, because after seeing how good Rocky Helmet uh, Torn was in Gen 7, and also very notably, uh, Keldeo became... You know, at some point, people were saying Keldeo was broken and spammable, and I still think that's the case, but... People started shifting away from Keldeo in favor of more setup hyper offense styles featuring things like Superior and Volcarona and Manaphy and screens and uh, Sticky Web and stuff, stuff like that. It was Sticky Web and then screens. Sticky Web kind of disappeared after screens. But you get the idea, you know, setup stuff. And less of uh, Keldeo's uh, hit and run kind of style. But, uh, so uh, with that in mind, then the Assault Vest on Torn, which was in large part to help pivot around Keldeo, that became less essential, so players started messing around with Rocky, Helmet, Torn, in um, Oris, and it's become very popular, you know, possibly even more popular than Assault Vest now. Not to say that Assault Vest has, like, ex gone extinct or something, but it's, uh, I mean, it's not just the Rocky Helmet, which is nice, because it, it helps in all manner of situations, like, you know, you help pivot around Mega Metagross or Mega Metacham or stuff like that. But it also frees you up to run Taunt, and that's really big for directly messing with Clefable. Here's a great example. Uh, these, this hilarious mirror match, this is originally an ABR team, and this uh, team was built in 2019, and it had an AV Torn. 
back when that was, you know, the standard, the only one. Um, and now in 2023, then this team is resurfaced and both players had the same idea of making it, you know, taunting Rocky Helmet torn. Um, so, yeah, that's, I think that's more or less everything I wanted to say. Oh, look, it uh, knocked off, it got knocked off and lost a helmet. Both, both the same. So, yeah. All right, it's pretty much everything. Uh, Tornadus Wars, hilarious. <laughs> Knocking off the life orb and, uh, look at that, that's a, such a great example. It knocks off the life orb and now, without the life orb, Clef isn't strong enough to KO it anymore. Beautiful. Yeah, so th this game ends in a... It taunts, but this game ends in a Calm Mind Clef War. So. <laughs> and then there was a crit, and now no Hurricane confuse, Confusion crit stuff. So. Uh, the Garchomp doesn't crit either, hilariously. And... Oh, I'd actually live. No. Yeah, alright. Thank you so much for watching slash listening. I hope this was enjoyable slash informative slash whatever the hell for you. And I will catch you in the next one.